Hello second grade. Today we're turning markers into paint and we're using warm colors and cool colors for our pumpkin painting. So for today you need a piece of paper, some cool color crayons, warm color markers, they have to be washable, some water and a paintbrush. If you don't have a paintbrush just use a q-tip, salt, you guys should be drawing in a pencil but I'll have to draw in a marker so you can see it. Let's first start with drawing our pumpkin. When I draw my pumpkin, I want it to be big. I want most of my paper to be a pumpkin shape. What I do is I first draw one really big C, nice and big. I draw another C, so I have kind of like a half shape. And these C's are going to create my pumpkin. And I have two kind of moon shapes and then I draw a line down the middle. And this creates kind of a pumpkin looking shape. And I don't forget my little stem. It's a little triangle on the top. Sometimes I make some squigglies to make it look like a pumpkin. I want to divide the background into sections so that I can color it. So I'm going to draw lines coming out of the pumpkin. All right, you guys are more than welcome if you want to use a black marker to outline your pumpkin when you're done drawing it. You absolutely can do that, but you don't need to. So if you don't have it, don't worry. Our first step is to use those cool color crayons to color in the entire background. So I went ahead and colored up our entire background with those cool colors. I did some different blues, different greens, and two different purples. I am so excited for this next step, but before you move on, make sure you don't forget your little stem. I did brown for it. You can do green if you'd like. All right, so now I have my warm color markers that my I got my red, orange, and yellow. I wanna make sure that I am coloring in a order so we get a nice value scale or we have that illusion of the pumpkin being 3D. So it looks like it's kind of popping out of the page. So we want to start on the bottom with our red, orange in the middle, and yellow on top. When we start to kind of color, we want this to just kind of be a very brief, I don't want to say scribble, but that's kind of what this is. I'm just kind of using some lines for the bottom of my pumpkin. It almost kind of looks like fire. But when we put water on this, it's going to wake it up and make it turn into paint. So I only need to use really that much. I don't need too much of it at all. Next, in the middle, I'm putting that orange down. And I'm just doing these lines. I have it touch a little bit of the marker underneath it. I'm going all the way up because I want most of my pumpkin to be orange. Most pumpkins are. Last but not least, our yellow on the top. I would start from the top and go down with your yellow so you don't accidentally mix it with the um, orange. Because then you have like an orangey marker and not yellow. All right, so we don't want to keep it like this because we know that when we color, we don't want all those white spaces. But this is where it gets really cool. Remember that water and that paintbrush? Go ahead and grab that. When you're ready for this step, make sure your salt is close by because that chemical reaction we want to do um, happens fast while the paint is still wet. So have your salt, and it can be just normal salt you'd use at the dinner table, close by. I take my paintbrush, I just dip it right in the water. I kind of do a couple wipes on the sides so I don't have too much drip. When you go to turn your marker into paint, start at the top. You don't want to accidentally turn your yellow part bright orange. So I'm just rubbing water onto the marker and I can see that the marker is just kind of melting in. See how I'm going to drag my yellow that water down and I just rub, rub, rub. And I'm creating kind of a watercolor paint. 
you're gonna need to kind of mush it around. So I'm doing in the shape of circles almost. The more water that you add to it, the more juicy it becomes and you really want that. See how I'm kind of pulling that orange all the way up to our yellow. Ooh. And so there's half and half. So here's my paint and here's my marker lines. It's pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. I wanna start up here. All right, so now that my entire pumpkin is nice and wet, I've really gotten all the spaces covered in water and marker. It looks like I painted it. I really like how this turned out. Now the finishing touch is this really cool salt reaction. I just need a little, so I'm gonna shake about a pinch full in my hand like that. I do a little pinch and I want to sprinkle this inside of those wet puddles because you're gonna see your paper kind of buckle so it's kind of folding upwards because it's holding all that water and I'm just sprinkling all of that salt you're not gonna be able to see it too well because you guys are kind of far away let me zoom in there we go so you can see those crystals are there if I move it around what these crystals are doing right now is soaking in the water and when it soaks in that water, it also is taking the paint away. So it's going to turn into a really cool, almost crystally pattern. Because salt likes to drink paint in. So I'm going to show you guys a video or a close up of what it looks like when our salt is already dry. Because this guy, he's not dry yet. We gotta wait. For him to get there but remember my example look at that you can still see a couple on there and the salt will just kind of fall off some of it will stick but that's okay so excited to see your guys finished result go ahead and when you're done take a picture and post it on the discussion board on Schoology Friends, if you don't have water or a paintbrush and you just want to color everything in with just crayons or just markers, that is totally fine. Do what you can with what you have. Happy creating!